We're back here at the NRA National Farms Museum here at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia, here with Doug Wicklund, senior curator. Doug, thank you. We, we pulled you away from your busy day. We know every day is a busy day here at the National Farms Museum. Whether doors are open or closed, you guys are working here. Uh, and and you, you took some time out to do some editions of the Curator's Corner. Great stuff so far. Great history, great story, great farms. What do you have for this edition, sir? John, this is a gun that uh, I think you'll get a big kick out of. In fact, so much of a kick, I'm going to see what it feels like when you hold it. It's a 1911, a government model Colt. But one of the things when I held this gun was that I felt I had almost stepped into the twilight zone. Oh. Because this is a gun that's got a real special story to tell. Wow. One of the neat things is that this belonged to a man, John Cameron, Hume Storer. He was a Canadian. He went to war. In World War I, he joined up. He was in the uh, Canadian Infantry. For two years, he was tested in the trenches. He was part of an ammunition train, hauling those uh, cartridges, that ammunition, up to the front. Right. He did that for two years. Imagine the stress he went through. But he carried this pistol. That was one of the reasons why he made it through. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to do that the rest of his life. He applied to become a pilot with the Royal Flying Corps. Wow. Was accepted. He soloed in December of 1916. Then he got orders to take off on a routine mission, mm -hmm. February 17th, right. 1917. Mm -hmm. He took off and flew into limbo. He disappeared. Whoa. They found no trace of him. They found no trace of his plane. It was as if he took off and never came down. I call this a Twilight Zone gun because for some reason this gun showed up in an American gun store. Get out. Where could it have been? Was it something he left behind with a friend? Was it something that uh, maybe came back without him? But it's a 45 pistol that went through the rigors of the trenches for two years. And then this was with a Royal Flying Corps pilot, a gun that was in the air during the Great War. That's a gun that has history just written all over it. And this one actually has John Cameron's name, mm. his uh, military unit. It's a gun where we can actually look and see in his attestation papers, he was a master engraver. That's the reason why he, that marking on the side of the, the gun on so the slide he is so great. It himself. He engraved it himself. He did wow. a great job. But that's the kind of pistol that when I hold, or when John is holding, gives me shivers. You just it, said it, shiver, and he was absolutely right. For it. When he told me this story and I was holding it, I, that is so amazing. It's so so cool. And and the great thing, you said he carried this for two years. And you can see the, the wear on this where it was carried, I imagine, holstered, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and so it's so it's beautiful. I mean, this Colt, Colt government model is beautiful for us farms and fish. You can't of, go of wrong with a 1911, beautiful. as they say. Oh, man, but this is a gun that was there. When you're wow. holding a piece of history like this, you're immediately one hand away oh. from the person that used it. So and so amazing. John Cameron, Hume Store, wherever you are, your gun is here at the National Firearms Museum and we're telling your story. I'm going to say and we thank him even though he doesn't but for, for sharing his history and his firearm about this and we do have and we'll get some shots for folks those attestation papers because yes. I was looking at those before we went on camera and and they're they're very cool. It's amazing what you can find out about a gun once you start researching. The Canadian government their archives holds incredible information about even soldiers that disappeared. This man is on a monument overseas even though they never found his body his gun, though, how did his gun show up in Jeez. America? It's wow. one of those questions, one of those mysteries that sometimes in the National Firearms Museum is part of the story of Americans and their guns. Wow, that's awesome. Doug, thank you so much. How can people come and see this virtually online or come here and see, see the firearm here? In the uh, internet, you can go to uh, www.nramuseum.com. You can see this gun pictured in our World War I gallery. You can actually see stories of dozens of other great guns from the start of our nation all the way up to the present day. Come by and see us too in Fairfax, Virginia. We're right off of Interstate 66. A lot of free parking. Doug, thank you so much. Wonderful stories, wonderful farms. Thanks for being part of the Curator's Corner, sir. Thank you, sir.